The tooling around Golang has always been awesome, and with Golang 1.24 it's even more awesome. Now having inconsistent versions using CLI tools can be quite problematic, especially if it is a linter or a code generator. Because there has been no official way to define these CLI tools in your Golang project or throughout your Golang projects. But this isn't problematic anymore with Golang 1.24 and the new tool directive. And I will actually show you why this is the case in this video. So let's just get straight to the point what's the actual problem it solves and why would you actually use it. Now the big problem here is that managing these linters, code generators or command line utilities can be quite problematic because it involves manual installation steps. And mostly these installations were kind of outside the project's dependency management, so outside of the Golang project. And as you can expect, this could lead to a lot of problems, especially when you work with a lot of people. One big problem could be, for instance, version inconsistencies across multiple development environments or even CI systems. So let's just quickly do an example here. Let's just imagine that you are using a really old or outdated linter and your coworker is actually using the latest version of this linter. Now this newest version could introduce, for instance, a new linting mechanism or some sort of major change changes in the code base and in the whole functionality. Now as you can expect this can work fine for your coworker but doesn't really work for you because you have an outdated version and this can lead to these version inconsistencies and can cause a lot of problems in your code or in your system. Now there are a few workarounds like having a tools.go file which basically defines these tools but it feels really dirty and luckily in Golang 1.24 this whole problem with tooling and tool management has been solved. So let's just look at an old way of managing these tools so we can actually see the benefit of using and leveraging this tool directive. All right, now the old way would be to obviously define a tools.go file. So let's just quickly do that here, tools.go. And what we now can say is package main. Now, the more conventional way would be to just create a tools module itself and not directly include it in the main package. But for now, just for simplicity, we will keep it simple and just declare this tools.go file inside of our main package. And then in here, you would basically do this magic here, which automatically when you save, the LSP is going to add this line here for us as well. And what we can now do is basically define our tools inside just a huge import. So what we can say is for instance, golang.org slash x slash lint slash golint, right? Now, please make sure that your tools are not deprecated in any way. Golint is deprecated here, but we're going to ignore this. I'm just going to demonstrate how the tools were defined in the tools.go file. And then we could add like a lot more tools like bench set for instance, or even the stringer tool. Now in these blank imports allow then the go command to basically record precise version information for these listed tools here in the go.mod file while also preventing normal builds from importing these tools. Now a quick word here about these two directives in the beginning of the file, I'm probably going to make a separate video just about these directives because it's also really important to know them. But generally these directives or this plus build tools directive is just a build constraint, which is also called like a build tag that basically prevents this file from being compiled during normal builds. Now the legacy syntax is this plus build tools and then we also have this go column build tools, which basically mean the same thing. However, the newer syntax is obviously the first line. All right, now with that in mind, we could now just for instance, run go mod tidy. It will basically download all these three tools. And if we now have a look at our go.mod file, we now have these three tools, right? We have like the linting, then the bench set, which is like in the performance or the perf module in this case, and then stringer, which is in tools. And then maybe if you want to install these globally on your system and update them, you might have like a really ugly bash script that does that for you. And it's really pretty dirty. It doesn't feel really good as well. And that's why the Golang team introduced the tool directive. So let's just remove the tools.go file here. We don't need this anymore. And then we can remove, let's just remove all of the requires here. 
And how do we now get started with the tool directive? Basically, what we would say is go get and then dash tool, which uses the tool directive now. And then we are going to define the tool we are going to use in our project, which could be, for instance, the stringer tool. Now, if you don't know anything about the stringer tool, don't you worry, it's not really important. We're not going to apply it right now. But to sum it up, it's literally just a CLI tool that lets you automate the creation of the string methods. Now, if we now run this command here, what it will actually do, it will now install the tool and mark it as a tool in our go.mod file. And this also exactly shows like what version we are actually using for this tool and what tool we are actually using in the project. So the tool directive here brings tool versioning directly into the Go module system, which just ensures the consistency and reproducibility. It also adds the corresponding require directors for the tool's dependencies. And now the tool is available through the go tool command. Now, if we're going to quickly run this, so let's just run go tool. And what you will actually see is the available tools in our project. Now go comes with predefined tools as well. So feel free to check them out, try them out on your own. But we are going to focus on the stringer tool here. Now, the first time you might run a specific tool, it might take some time because, or it might be a bit slow because in the end Go will compile the tool first if it's not yet compiled. Now, if we now run Go tool and then we specify the tool itself, like Stringer in this case, it will actually run the Stringer CLI, which is pretty cool and pretty helpful. Also, what is really cool is that the tool directive enhances the Go generate workflow, which now uses the version of the tool specified in your go.mod file. Now, what is a really nice thing as well here is that you can even leverage a different go.mod file for your tools. And why is this even useful? The main reason could be dependency isolation, because in the end you prevent potential version conflicts between your main project's dependencies and the transitive dependencies required by your tools. Now to do that, what we could do is literally just create a tools.mod file. And now we can basically define a module here in the Golang version. Now what would be better practice is just create a new directory like tools and then create there a go.mod file as well. But I'm going to just keep it as tools.mod in our root directory here of the project. And then what we can do is we can define the same stringer tool with go get dash tool. And then we are also going to define the mod file here, which in this case is tools.mod. Now, if we do this, we now actually see that the transitive dependencies are actually now in our tools.mod file and the tool here as well, which is pretty cool. Now we can execute this tool by just running go tool. And then we specify the mod file here again with tools.mod and then we say stringer. And now we basically have the same result and the same output, but now with better dependency isolation for our tools. All right, I think this tool directive is pretty awesome. Now, if you also want to find out what the weird sync test package is in Golang 1.24, feel free to check out this video here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and bye bye.